house iron, copper, among others. And these were used in the same way we use the coins, we use the notes, and of course, majority of them were traded regionally and even internationally. Meaning when we look at Great Zimbabwe, we are looking at our great past, where the ancestors were already participating in regional trade and external trade. And especially with the Arabian world, the Persian world, they were coming to this great medieval palace in search for gold, in search for ivory, among others. Then we are also going to exhibit, um, then whilst we still there on ingots, there is also a coin that was found at Great Zimbabwe uh, that was coming from East Africa, written 1450 with the inscription of a sultan of Kilwa, the ruler of Kilwa. And it's a symbol of trade that was found at Great Zimbabwe. We have some iron gongs which were found in Great Zimbabwe whose origins can be traced from Zambia. So it basically shows that it was part of a trade network that was happening around 14th century, around 12th century, uh, before the demise of Great Zimbabwe. Um, and also that if you look at the strategic location of Great Zimbabwe, it was not really a source of gold. Gold was being sourced from other parts of the country. And of course, from Great Zimbabwe, the goods were finding, finding their way outside the continent. And one byproduct of such international uh, trade of the time is the Swahili language. It is a language which, if you look at it, is about 40% Shona waves. It's a language which a Shona speaker can listen to and can hear what is being said. <coughs> then we are also going to exhibit Mbira. This is a traditional musical instrument. And specifically, Mbira Zewa Zimu, which is actually related to spiritual world. This is one of the great achievements of the past. We are fighting a challenge where ethnomusicologists are now believing in kalimbas, which, are be, which were derived from our mira. So we want to show that in the past, we were that great, the same way we are today and possibly in the future. We have got the headdress. Here, we are basically looking at the Tonga, but the whole issue is about multiculturalism, the diversity of our cultures here in Zimbabwe, and supported by our new constitution, which is also the amendment number 20 of 2018, which supports multiculturalism. Then also on the uh, zone one, we are also going to have the Zimbabwe national flag. Of course, you know what it symbolizes. It's also part of what we are exhibiting and all the stuff we are going to exhibit at our pavilion. Uh, the people, the minerals, among other things. Then the coat of arms and the flagpole. So these are the equipment which we are going to uh, ship out to be part of the exhibition. So, we are looking at a land with the vast opportunities, like if you look at the wonders which we mentioned. So, and also that this is a country that is open for business. So, uh, basically this is the information we are going to display, the story we are going to tell in Zone 1. <coughs> 